Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm sitting down here with Mr. Bill from the College of Biomedical Equipment Technology. He's an industry expert on regulatory and that's why we're here. We're going to discuss why we have regulatory, what they are, and you know maybe some of your options for getting trained yourself on regulatory. So, Mr. Bill, thank you very much yeah. for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. I wouldn't say I'm an industry expert. No, he's I would an industry say I have expert. A pretty good uh, <laughs> understanding of uh, compliance a lot more now after learning more about the DNV and going through their chop classes. Well, you've been in the industry for a while. Though. I have been. I've been in the industry about 40 years, I'm embarrassed to say. So, <laughs> been a long time, you know. Um, and I know I do not plan on retiring anytime soon. <laughs> so, just in case for y'all are thinking that. But um, I really never got involved too much in compliance except what was expected on the job you know when, whenever we got inspected so with um the way that i was in the industry when i first was coming up everyone did all their compliance about a month before right right the joint commission would come in that's so before we get too far ahead right now when it comes to compliance you know it, it's basically every medical facility has to be inspected regularly and you have to pass correct in order for you to get federal money. It's it's a money thing. And that's because the government wants to make sure that this facility actually is up to their level of standards. And, and there are several uh, companies, they're, they're companies that are the inspectors. So there is the FDA, which has oversight over medical, but we have the Joint Commission, which is a company that, that inspects. That's the one that most everybody knows. They're not for profit too. Yep. And then there is the DNV, which is a, they've been around for a while. Yeah, they've been around longer than the Joint Commission, but recently got into the healthcare within the last uh, 10 years. Right. And uh, they expanded out to the U.S. And they're probably, their market share is probably second. They probably got 20% of the market share, right. but they're growing rapidly. They use different standards than the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission right. has their quality standards, the EC, um, standing for environmental care, and the DNV has, and they don't like to be called the DNV, just DNV, I get corrected on that all the time. <laughs> they have their standards, um, which are um, SR, um, oh, it, it just fails me, I always oh, say sorry. service requests, but so they, they use SR standards, and then uh, they, they're more focused on the physical environment right. and life safety, and uh, they are for-profit, so that's the difference, and they use okay. uh, NIO standards that are derivatives off the ISO standards. So that's the way that they work. So it helps you understand your procedures more. Um, both organizations are good at what they do. Um, they, I mean, compliance is compliance, but what I do like about the DNV is that they coach you. So if you have a non-conformity, meaning that uh, you, you failed on something instead of getting written up right away, depending on how severe it is, they'll say, well, you had 38 things correct in here, but you have two of these eustachian things up here that are incorrect. Right. Let's figure out why. You know, and as long as you identify it and you have a policy to correct it, you've identified it. So they don't want to punish you for making a mistake. Instead, they want to reward you for finding the mistake and having a way of rectifying it so it doesn't happen again. So one of the big differences between Joint Commission and DNV, uh, so to let you guys know, my first experience with DNV is when I moved from South Carolina to Houston the Houston Methodist Hospital, which is one of the world's most famous hospitals when it comes to heart surgery, they use DNV. And when I was applying for the job, they told me, by the way, we were a DNV hospital. I had to do my own research because there wasn't very much information on it. Um, and come to find out, what it is, is it's a process of constant self-improvement. And, yes. and you have to have like uh, internal auditing program set up. Mm -hmm. So unlike joint commission where I, I think most people like audit themselves like you mentioned like a, a week or a month before inspection you every single year you have to get audited to a certain percentage and uh it doesn't just cover like clinical engineering like what what all are the facets of like dnv oh it's uh, it goes very detailed uh first of all when you're dnv certified a hospital is dnv certified they're iso certified and it's about a four-year process you know, okay from the time you start and they come in, they inspect every year where the Joint Commission inspects every three, three years. years. Yep. And um, the first year they make sure, you know, they, they do a lot of training and education. And then they come in and set you up with your, your policies, your procedures, and they help you with that. After the fourth year, you're expected to be on your own and right. have your ISO certifications ready. So it's very intense 
to getting this done. So it starts off where they have a quality management system and team, or some hospitals hire one person. Mm -hmm. It could be a safety officer, or it could just be the quality person that does that. And their job is to help every department with their standards to make sure that they have their policies and procedures correct. Policies and procedures are supposed to get inspected every two years, updated. Okay. You know, some say every three, but the DNV doesn't tell you what they do, what to do. What they do want you to do is prove what you say you do, you know, and then, okay. right. so it says plan, do, check, act. Say what you do, do what you say, and prove it. And that's the way that they look at it. And so they look at your policies for everything. And, you know, they come in and they ask you, you have your verbal, mm -hmm. your, your verbal uh, meetings, and they'll ask you about your business and you'll tell them. And, and if you have a problem, and don't be afraid to let them know if you failed at something. They want to know. But they right. all, what they're mainly looking at is, all right, you failed at something. That's okay. We all What'd you fail. Do? What'd you do about right. it? And how? And then where's the documentation that proves it? So they'll check things huh. like fire alarms on and all the time, you know, the inspection. With us, the biggest thing that they inspect, believe it or not, is our test equipment. Who calibrated it? Really? Yeah. And, uh, and okay. then and what, what qualifies them to calibrate it? You know, these are the way the questions right. they right. do. And I've never gotten questions like that when it was joint commission. Matter yeah. of fact, they actually, for clinical engineering, joint commission normally skips over it. And then I, I ask why. I wanted to find out why, you know, because both the DNV and the Joint Commission report to CMS. Right. Right. And then from there, they get their conditions of participation so they can get reimbursed by uh, Medicaid and Medicare. All right. That's the whole reason behind it when you were talking about the money. So the CMS puts out the guidelines to everyone. Right. And um, so they come out and they inspect. And then so the, um, they'll look at the test equipment. So they'll ask about the test equipment. Now, the Joint Commission, from what I understand, um, they don't have the expertise in that. They look more at the life safety, right? Right. So they don't really look at the medical equipment because if they did, there'd be a lot more <laughs> yeah. hospitals that would get some type ones going on. And I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. No, no, it's okay because that's that is true. So the difference between Joint Commission and DMV is with Joint Commission. I've worked at many hospitals. I've been through quite a few Joint Commission inspections. Yeah, me too. And it's always a a rush right at the last minute, like the last couple weeks before the inspection crew comes in. It's a mad dash. It's very stressful on all the people. Um, you find out stuff that you should have been doing all along, which nobody bothered to tell you about versus DNV. You're expected to always be doing it. And I think once a year you have an internal audit where they check to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Correct. So there's never a mad dash. At, DNV comes in and we didn't even know they're on site. It's like they're there one day and, and there was no write-ups or anything. And it was just a smooth process. And joint commission's never a smooth process. It just isn't because people become complacent over time. And that was the big difference as a, as a biomed between the two. And I know one was very stressful and one of them was super easy. Um, it was more complex because it took a lot of effort to, to get the ISO. Mm -hmm. But once you, like you said, once you have the program up and going, you're good. I mean, you just got to keep doing what you already said that you're going to do. Yeah. Okay. The SR service requirements. That's what okay, it stands so, for. <laughs> there it so is. It came to me. So. But the good um, thing is, uh, when it comes to DMV, unlike Joint Commission, you can become certified to uh, be an internal auditor. There's different levels. So what what are the different levels of the certification? Well. I'm not sure on the internal auditors because that's not my expertise, but that's something I can speak on later. Um, the different certifications, if you're in-house to get certified, it starts off with the CHOP basic, that's okay. the CHOP B, the CHOP advanced, the CHOP A, and then the CHOP E. And uh, it's a four-day, it's a three-week class with our school because we're the only company that has a partnership with the DNB right. to do training. If they train you, it's a three-day class. But that's the reason why we extended it out to three weeks is because there's no way you could do it's it too much three, information. Three. Um, it took me a couple times, a couple tries, you know, um, the DMV teases me. They call me rebuy, you know, because I went back and then, uh, but uh, it wasn't easy. I mean, it was because you have to learn all the different departments as well, the different like facilities. You learn about the. So you don't just learn about clinical engineering. No, it's, you have to, just, in order to be CHOP certified, it's, it's you have to. It's called the eight sisters. You learn about the physical environment and there's eight departments. You know, it's uh, facilities, life safety, safety, emergency preparedness, okay, um, utilities, hazard waste, um, the other two I can't remember is oh security is one and then the last one I quality you know so 
what can people expect for, uh, from the different chops, like chop A? Uh, you said chop B is basic, right? Yeah, chop B is it's basic. It, it explains to you what the NIO standards are, okay. and, and NIO standards are derived from the ISO standards, right? And then they go into the physical environment, and so you have to learn a lot of acronyms, a lot of um, new language that you're not used to on as far as compliance, but then you learn all the codes, you learn about non-compliance, you learn about all the different testing procedures, how to document correctly, make sure everything that you do is documented. Okay. If you didn't document it, it didn't happen. Right. You know, and then they want to see policy improvement indicators. They want to see your equipment management plan. And then what they want to see is the evaluation of your equipment management plan and where you fell short and where you excelled. So who would CHOP B be for? If, if CHOP B is for anyone in the hospital. I would okay. recommend anybody in the CHOP B that works in any of these eight departments to get CHOP B certified because it gives you a much better understanding of not just your job in your department, but how a hospital overall interacts with each other. It right. teaches you how to communicate more effectively, how to cover someone else's department, not as far as managing it, but on safety, life safety issues and physical environment issues. So uh, the CHOP certification, it is an official certification. So after your name and your signature block, you'd have CHOP A, B, or... Uh, Correct. Or B, E. Um, yeah. So what about CHOP A? CHOP A is... It's more advanced. advanced. Uh, CHOP A takes what you learn from CHOP B, and it gets more into the chillers, or how the chillers operate, and okay. how uh, the, the fire alarms operate, how the locking mechanisms operate, and how, you know, CHOP B gets more into... Your security, um, this is what the security should do. Like, believe it or not, you have to consider, is your security qualified to be security? They're not babysitters. They right. have to keep it secure. So you learn about security vulnerability assessments, emergency vulnerability assessments. And these are forms you have to fill out. You learn things about, you know, you don't think about this, but if there's construction being done, this is the CHOP-A now. Um, I'm flipping back and forth. If there's construction being done, you have to have... Um, an ICRA, which is an infection control right. report, right. and then and you have to get something else signed. It has to be approved by the city, too, which is an alternative life safety measurement okay. form. Okay, right, right, right. And then you have to be careful because infection control comes from construction around the facility. So you have to do a particle measurement before, dust check before and after to make sure that there's no additional dust. And these are things huh. that it teaches you. It teaches you how to follow, how to do your emergency preparedness is what the CHOP B teaches you, you know. If there's an emergency, these are the things you need to consider. And there is a lot. I mean, you can talk for a week on each of the topics, but... So the CHOP A is more like a, a managerial type of a level? No, or that, what that would, would be, it be E. The CHOP A will get into how to repair chillers, how, okay. uh, what um, lights to use, you so know, what parts to use. Let's say a, a shop foreman or a team lead or something like that. that it, would... No, it's for, it's for everyone. Uh, okay. It could be the director. The directors should all be CHOP A certified and be... And for that matter, E, that uh, they just came out with. But the employees themselves, someone like uh, a biomed like you or myself, that would be in there. The, um, chop A, B, and E if you want to get into management or if you already are in the management. It teaches you a lot about rules and regulations of your department. It teaches you how to look up the right codes on all the okay. NAFTA books that they have. Right. Just things that you take for granted. It teaches you about everything about compliance and how to contact the right people. Chop A is more hands-on on devices that deal with the facility like you know i didn't know anything about chillers or <laughs> like if you're walking if there's a defective water sprinkler in there all right if the sprinkler is going to be down for more than 10 hours you have to put a fire watch on there yep yep you know and if you don't then you have to shut that part of the hospital down these are things that you're aware of so you're more aware of all the rules you can't it's kind of like as a citizen we're expected to know all the laws so we don't break them even though right. we're not attorneys right but ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right. I it's agree. the same way with the hospital. Ignorance of compliance is no excuse. So you should learn it. Well, since this is stuff that pretty much is universal, even though it's, it's not joint commission, if you were in a small facility and, you know, we wear a lot of hats when we were in a small facility. If you were like the senior level biomed, even if you were in a joint commission hospital, still being CHOP certified would still teach you about how the facility oh, works. Yeah, because thing. compliance is compliance. And if anything, you speak more on the um, the surveyor. They're called surveyors. You right. speak more on their level, right? And they can see that you know what you're talking about. And um, it, it's just good overall. And then it also instills confidence in you from your team members because they know that you can defend whatever it is that you're working on or your actions or however mm -hmm. you're reporting it. 
there's really not much difference on being inspected from the Joint Commission and the DMV. I honestly think the DMV inspectors are much more difficult. They have two ways of inspecting. First year they come in, they grill you. They go through all SR 1 through 7, service requirements 1 through 7, which teaches you how your shop should operate. You okay. get all, everything done. So they'll go through that. Show me SR 1, show me what you did here, here, and here. And you have to break out all the documentation. You have to go in your database, show them everything. The next year they'll just, and they'll talk to you. And as long as they see you're answering consistently and you identified some things, because nobody has a perfect shop uh, and you, know, yeah, you, you owned it, they'll say, okay, that's good. So every other year you have the intense inspection. Right, they, right. they go through a fine tooth comb. It's very true. The Joint Commission, when they came in and inspected me, based on my experiences, I'm not saying this for everyone, they would just ask me three or four questions. And if I didn't give them the deer and headlights look, they moved on to the next one. Yeah. Now, if you answer incorrectly or inconsistent, which you can if you're not trained as a you know, compliance officer, you can have erratic answers and they'll pick up on that mm -hmm. and then they'll start digging. They'll start deep. digging. Yeah. So my experience with the Joint Commission is that they'll come through and they'll point at random devices and it's a certain quantity that they usually do, like 10 devices or right, something. Right, 10 devices. And, and then they'll point at it and say, show me the entire service history on this. Well, that's only a fraction of your program. And mm -hmm. if anything, I mean, depend on the, the area of the hospital, I mean, you could be dealing with hazardous materials or something and they just usually skip over some of that. The, so the Joint Commission has hot topics that they hit on and a lot of the other things are kind of in the forethought. But um, with DNV, like your entire program is is in question. I mean, everything at, at, at one point or the other, you're going to be inspected either internally audited or as Bill said, uh, every other year there's a tough inspection. But it's not really a tough inspection. I've been through a couple of them. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and, the, and your internal audit well, should be catching it. Now, when you were uh, inspected by the DMV, were you inspected as a technician or the manager of the... I was I was a technician, but uh, I was the one that was answering, you know, some of their okay. questions and whatnot. I mean... Because I'm not sure if you knew what was going on on the director level. He was getting grilled. Oh, I'm sure. So, <laughs> I'm sure. So, but I, yeah. I mean, at that particular facility, it, it was a it was managed by a major medical company, yeah. uh, which they're an ISO company. Mm -hmm. So they already had their standards in place. I would imagine if you're a smaller facility, you might actually want a DNV type certification. But we'll we'll probably get into that in some other some other video. I just wanted to explain to you guys the the options when it comes to inspection activities and why you would do it and what are your options for career advancement or for professional development which is your chop certifications which cbet does offer i'll leave information on that in the video description down below so if you are interested in getting more information on your chop certification add that little little uh, uh chop to the end of your signature block gives you some career possibilities for the future who knows? But uh, look in the video description down below. You'll get a little bit more information on it. And uh, what about CHOP E? Uh, the, the executive one, it, you said it's a brand new one. Is that something that you can train on currently or is that something that's going to be in the future? It'll be in the future because okay. we have to send one of our instructors to the class to get certified before they can teach. Okay. And that was supposed to be me right after we had our trade show and, and I wasn't ready to do that just at that time. Then they also have infection control, which we're looking at because... Um, their infection control, I believe, I don't know if it's three days or a week, but they're saying that we can work on that as well. I okay. think if everyone in housekeeping would get certified infection control, that would stop a lot of the re-emitters. Housekeeping don't realize how important they are to the quality management team. And so they came up with the infection control, not just for housekeeping, but for everyone in the right. hospital. And uh, that'll be another certification that's coming in the very near future. For okay. Us. I'd, I'd love to hear about that one in the future because honestly, I think... Uh, in the biomed world, at least one person in a shop needs to take on certain rules like uh, hazardous materials, infection control within your own shop. And uh, if anything, we learned some really harsh lessons when it came to um, the COVID emergency. So, but more on that later, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. Look for more information in the video description down below, and uh, we will see if we can get you any information. If you have any questions, please leave them down below, and I'll see if I can answer them for you. And uh, look for that, another certification for your professional development. Thanks, Mr. Bill. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate Pleasure. it, man. And guys, uh, contact cbet.edu.